as depressing as it is to watch your stocks and your real estate go down right now. Remember that they have always recovered. So your job in this time frame is to remain mentally calm, understand what you own and why you own it. Hopefully you have some money to average down and be patient, wait it out. Hey guys, Omar Khan here with Theta Trading and today's topic of conversation is will the markets crash now that the US midterm elections are out of the way? Okay, so before we do that, if I could ask you guys a big favor, if you enjoy our content, please consider hitting that like button, hit the subscribe button and if you want to get in touch with us, you can do so at betatradingco.com and you can also schedule a call if you like if you like what, what it is that we do. All right, so... Let's get on to today's topic of conversation. First of all, I want to talk about how bad it's already been, okay? So I want to share this little research note here from Stansberry Research, okay? Now, I've been investing for almost 25 years, and I've been part of a lot of corrections, recessions, pullbacks. They all have ended, and I don't think this one will be any different. Eventually, it'll end, and uh, hopefully, things will get back to an all-time high, as they have historically done. But... Let's first take a look at the amount of carnage we have had this market decline. Now, this is the total stock and bond market value drawdown from the highest point to now the lowest point, okay? So you can see here, now I've been part of, like I said, three major ones. I started investing in the late 90s and 2000 to 2002, 2001, 2002, there's the first one there. You can see the drop, the pullback is around $6 trillion, okay? Okay. In 08, 09, that was probably the worst that I've ever been part of. And that drawdown was around $9 trillion. That means $9 trillion of value is being taken out because prices are lower. Bond prices and stock prices, okay? And you can see COVID was pretty bad. COVID was around $12 trillion. But this one is particularly bad. We are now at $15 trillion in basically wiped out wealth, Okay. Now, the reason the Federal Reserve is doing this is they're trying to slow inflation. So they're raising interest rates to combat inflation. Now, when you raise interest rates, it has a majorly negative effect on bond prices and stock prices. And that's exactly what has happened. Also, real estate is absolutely getting annihilated as well. So there's been really nowhere to hide. You've gotten hurt in every single asset category, but that is exactly what they wanted to do. And the reason they're trying to do this is so that all of us are broke and that we have no more money to spend, therefore, no inflation. Inflation is defined as too much money chasing too little goods and services. That's the spot that Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve is looking to get us into. Now, we started the year off at 25 basis points. That means the federal funds overnight rate was at 25 basis points, meaning one quarter of a percent. Now we are at 4%. That is a huge increase, and it's having a catastrophic effect on people. Variable rate mortgages have gone up. If you're renewing a mortgage, you're paying far more for it. The value of your assets are down substantially. You may have a problem with your business or your job just because the economy stinks right now. So it's pretty bad out there right now, okay? But now I want you to take a look at something else, okay? Let's take a look at what happens after... U.S. midterm elections. Now, I apologize. The bottom part, I had to take a screenshot here. So it's uh, uh, not the best. It's from U.S. Labor, uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay. So this is the S&P's 500, uh, S&P 500 performance after midterm elections since 1950. Okay. Now, midterm elections generally are not the best years for the stock market. Okay. But this year has been really, really bad. Okay, so let's take a look all the way from 1950. And we're also going to take a look at periods where we had high inflation. So the chart on the bottom shows the periods where we had high inflation. You can see in 1975, in the early 1980s, and now again. Okay, so let's take a look at what the stock market did after those periods of time. So going back to 1950 to 2018, we can see that one month after the U.S. midterm elections, the average return has been 1.56% and it's been up 77.8% of the time. Three months after, we've had a return of 7.71% and a positive 
uh, stocks are positive 88.9% of the time, okay? Look at six months later. Six months later, the market's been up on average 14.5%, median is 17%, and a year after, 15 and 14, and 100% of the time it's been positive. So there's no guarantee that this will happen again, but we have to look at what history teaches us. History teaches us that after these really, really bad periods of time, that the markets have historically recovered. Now, what the markets don't like is uncertainty. And what you have going into a midterm election like this year, you have uncertainty politically, and you have who the hell knows what the hell's going on with inflation, right? That's the big, that's the, that's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Inflation just persistently is staying high. Now, as soon as we start getting some good data that's showing that inflation is coming down, we can expect the stock market to hopefully rally. Why? Because it's a forward-looking mechanism. Now, let's take a look at some periods of time where we had high inflation. So, we're going to look at 1974. Okay, so 1974, we can see a year, a month after, the market was still down around 12%. But look at three months after, look at one, six months after, and one year after. After one year in 1975, six, uh, one year later, the market was up 18.69%. And that's 1975, you can see there, okay? Now, if I look at, again, 1980 and 81, okay? So that's another period where we had high inflation. So 1982 was the midterm election year. And you can see, again, about a year after that, the market was positive 19.89%. Those are some big numbers, okay? Now, we are having, again, a bout of high inflation. So high inflation doesn't necessarily translate to lower stock values down the road. In fact, again, look at this number. Historically speaking, a year after the midterm elections, on average, the stock market has been up 15.33% and has been positive 100% of the time. Now, this year, this time could be different. Don't know. But what we do know is what history teaches us. So we always want to put ourselves in a position where we own high quality assets. Now, if those high quality assets happen to go down like they have this year and huge, and like I said, 08, 09, they were down 50%, the S&P and the NASDAQ. But if you have the ability to be able to hang around, which means you're using little to no margin, and you have the ability to wait for the market to eventually rebound and Ideally, if you could put some more money to work when the markets are this low, you can see how beneficial it can be a year later. It can be substantial. And that is what I really want you to take note of here. Just because the economy stinks today, and just because there's so much uncertainty, we have an inflation uncertainty, who the hell knows where inflation is going, who knows how much higher interest rates are going to go, how much more damage is this going to do to the housing market and stock market, and when will people finally say, I've had enough? I can't do this anymore. I cannot invest anymore. I'm depressed. I, I don't want to do this. It's, it's been horrible. That generally is the sign of something called capitulation, where people give up and throw in the towel. I've been doing this long enough to know we're pretty close to that level. People are, they're, they're fed up. They're done with investing, whether, you know, what, what happens, what investing happens to be. But that's generally where the best opportunities exist. Now, Warren Buffett said it best. When others are fearful, be greedy. And when others are greedy, be fearful. Right now, there is an extreme amount of fear out there. Now, could that fear increase more going forward? Absolutely it can. But as of right now, the fear is super high. It can go higher. But what does tell you and what history teaches us is the stock market has always recovered and gone to an all-time. So as depressing as it is, to watch your stocks and your real estate go down right now. Remember that they have always recovered. So your job in this time frame is to remain mentally calm, understand what you own and why you own it. Hopefully you have some money to average down, which would be great. And be patient. Wait it out. The idea, as Warren Buffett said, first rule investing, do not lose your money. Warren Buffett, has his portfolio has gone down by 50% in the past as well. But he didn't sell his assets his, when they were at a low point. He held on, hopefully even bought more. And that's why one of the many reasons why he's been a successful investor for all these years. So our job is the same. 
why would I want to sell my stocks at a depressed price in a, in a, in a, in a, in a poor economy when I can hang around and history teaches me that those assets have recovered to all-time highs? That doesn't mean every single stock is going to recover to an all-time high, but that's where your ability to understand and invest in high-quality companies plays a part. So if you invest in these high-quality companies that you believe in, your job is to not get a margin call, i.e. be forced to sell at a low point. And secondly, hang around and let history do what it does, which is history has taught us that the markets have always gone to an all-time high. My name is Omar Khan, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be uh, notified for future videos, hit the bell icon. And if you want to get in touch with us, thetatradingco.com, see what we do. Uh, and also, last thing, again, if you want to book a call with us, please find that link. We look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.